Good morning. Welcome. I'm Pamela Erlin. I am a psychic channel, spiritual teacher, and mystic. And by request, what I've been doing in this particular series is reading from A Course of Love. This is a oneness text. The author is Mary Perone, and she had it strongly impressed upon her heart to do this. Um, and I felt the Krishna con consciousness. I felt you know, what some will call the Christ consciousness or Jesus um, through this as she was writing it, as did she. And I thought, well, let's endeavor upon this journey together. You know, I read A Course of Love a long time ago, did the course, um, it made an incredible difference in the way that I think it was as if the love that it offered spoke directly to spirit and not mind. Therefore, when I read from it, um, it's just, I can just feel uh, Christ consciousness there, if you will. So I'm going to be reading, again, this is Course of Love, and then after each verse that I read, I'm going to stop and channel commentary from Jesus, one of my favorite Christ conscious beings of all time. You know, along with Krishna and Shiva and so many others, all the Buddhas and all the ascended masters, if you will. <clears throat> so let's start. Um, today we're on page seven of the prelude. We're on part 11. We're going to try to cover part 11 through part 14 today. Um, <clears throat> it says... When you think you can go only so far and no further in your acceptance of the truth of yourself as God created you, you are abdicating love to fear. He stops me there after that sentence. <laughs> he says, not just this course, but in any of the powerful teachings that bring divine remembrance of self to you. Again, do you stop yourself and do you just say, that's it. Something caused a reaction, a painful reaction in my mind. And therefore, maybe I'm not aligned. Maybe this isn't the course for me. Maybe oneness isn't my true self. He said, <laughs> he said God is not a knot. And then he said, apologies if that appears to be contradictory. From the mind standpoint, it always will. <laughs> there is no no. There is not a not in God. Everything is included. No exclusions. <laughs> um, let's continue on. He wants us to continue on reading from part 11. <clears throat> and it says... You are perhaps making this world a better place, but you are not abolishing it. In your acceptance of doing good works and being a good person, you are accepting ministry to those in hell rather than choosing heaven. You accept what you view as possible and reject what you perceive as impossible. Thus, you cling to the laws of man and reject the laws of God. You claim your human nature and reject your divine nature. He stops me there and he says, the act and reaction of excluding God, of betraying the love that is you, is hidden. It is so insidious. This course will teach you to become aware of when and how, not why, just when and how you do it. The why is not relevant. The mind will create so much fear. It will ask you, beg you, plead with you to abdicate love to fear. And I ask you to not. You can be the good person, you can follow the right and remember self. You can act and react in love. You can be in the world and not of it. 
this is important now. This is relevant now. This is love always. He wants us to move on to part 12 and of the book. It says, what is this rejection but rejection of yourself? And self is capitalized, that S. What is this rejection but fear masquerading as humility? What is this rejection but rejection of God? What is this but a rejection of miracles? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, he wants us to move on to part 13, where it says, you who have rejected yourself, again, capital S, are likely to feel increasingly burdened. Although an initial burst of energy may have followed your reading of the course or your discoveries of other forms of the truth, although you may have even experienced what seemed to be miracles happening to you, as you continue to reject yourself, this energy and these experiences that lightened your heart would have become to would have begun to recede and to seem distant and unreal as a mirage. All that you retain is a belief in effort and a struggle to be good and to do good, a belief that clearly demonstrates that you rejected who you are. He stops us here to channel and he says, there's always a letdown, isn't there? You did something good for alleged other. You did something good to or for little self and you felt good in the moment. It may have felt like an adrenal adrenaline, is that the word? Yes, adrenaline rush in your body um, but all roller coasters have their letdowns, don't they? This is sustaining because this is spirit. This is real because this is divinity. Um, he wants us to move on. And he says, it says in the course on page 14, Oh, child of God, you have no need to try at all. No need to be burdened or to grow tired and weary. He stops us after that sentence and he says, who's going to do the work? No wonder you're tired because you think that you have to do it. You, little self, has to do it. Yet that isn't truth. And it's impossible. You actually can't. Why? You don't have to. Spirit has its own flow. Grace is a gift that is still unmoving simultaneously. Will you now allow it to do the work for you? Will you, little you, now rest and leave the work to Spirit? Of course, you are allowing and observing Spirit moving the mind, the energies of the body into creative actions there is a return of creation, always. It has to go both ways. Service does not equal sacrifice. Um, he wants us to move on with part 14 and the rest of those sentences there where it says, you who want to accomplish much, much good in the world realize that only you can be accomplished. He stops us and says, you, little I, ego wants accomplishment. Spirit knows everything that little I does not, cannot, and will never. Moving on, it says in the Course, you are here to awaken from your slumber. You are here to awaken to the same world. A world that seems a little more sane than before, but still governed by insanity. A world in which it seems possible to help a few others, but certainly not all others. But to awaken to a new world. If all that you see changed within your world is a little less sanity than before, then you have not awakened. But you still are caught in the nightmare the ego has made. 
he stops us there and he said, he, it's like he puts a parenthesis around the part, the nightmare your ego has made. And I, I see like a bold in the your. Um, he says, again, you created ego. Do you remember in one of the texts, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, you are my children. You are my brothers and sisters. You are every possible role that has ever existed. You are not above me. You are not below me. There is no hierarchy in love. And Source wants to see and observe its experiences. It cannot do so were it not for you. Do you know the miracle of that? And if you don't, can you wonder about it for a moment? Can you wonder how loved you are for God to wish to see the light of divinity through you? The nightmare that you are seeing is only a reaction that your ego has made for you. And even ego itself was made by you, not by God. What you choose to see in the world is your doing. It is your choice. How you choose to see the world is your choice. When you can forgive the circumstance of how it feels to see the world as a nightmare, then and only then can you see the world peaceably and peacefully. Then and only then can you feel peace so deeply within yourselves? He's showing me this, this massive mountain. <laughs> and there are various camps. You know, there's base camp at the bottom, and like a midway camp, and then another camp here, and then the top. I believe this is pretty standard of a vision for, say, um, mountain climbers and whatnot who um, choose to endeavor upon these glorious but, but difficult expeditions. And he said, you just want to go here. And he points to the top. He said, you want the bliss, the ecstasy, the divinity. You want it all and you want it now. Yet all that you're asking for is peace. All that you're asking for is peace. Just let me feel peace. And we say to you, that's it. You just want peace. You just want what you already are. That's it. It's beautiful and so accessible and so easy to choose. Choose it today. Um, he moves on with the course. He asked me to move on reading it here on part 14. We're about, let's see, midway, to, all the way down here, the last sentence, it says, by choosing to reject yourself, you have chosen to try to make sense of the nightmare rather than to awaken from it. This will never work. He stops us and says, it won't work because when you see this fear and believe it, when you believe that it is true, that's the insanity that you need to awaken from. You can't make sense of insanity. And you can't ask others to make sense of insanity either. This is why I will never ask you to ask why the world is insane. Um, let's see. Yeah, a little bit of part 15, not all of it, he says. The first sentence, page 8, part 15, says, By rejecting who you are, you are demonstrating that you think you can believe in some of the truth, but not all of it. <laughs> he said, There is a beautiful, powerful principle of the sacred text you call the Kabbalion. It states the all is within the all. There are no exceptions to love. If you want the truth, take up big bite of the pie, not just a slice. I love you. <laughs>
Okay guys, that's all the reading and channeling we're going to do today.